Today we will be doing an install on the best belly pan for your Diesel Gladiator. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you like these videos and want to see more, like and subscribe down below. Let's get this started and get this bad boy on. The first step to getting going on this install is to remove the factory OEM skid plates and fuel tank skid. You'll want to leave in the def skid that holds the def tank up. Also, if you are running long arms, our skid plate is designed to work with them. If you're running the TerraFlex long arms, we recommend that you weld the brackets like you see here. You'll also have to remove the aluminum crossbar that connects the two brackets on the frame sides and trim the passenger side bracket like you can see here. Let's get to it. This bracket's already been trimmed as you can see. You'll want to trim right behind the first hole on this bracket. If you are running the TerraFlex long arm and you welded the brackets to the frame, you do not need to reinstall this cross member. If you're worried about welding your brackets to the frame, and want to retain the stock cross member that they send with their kit, you can reinstall that after you put our belly pan in. Now that we got the long arm brackets prepped, we can start removing all the factory OEM skid plates and fuel tank skid. To pull off the OEM skids, we'll be using an 18 millimeter socket, a 16 millimeter socket, and a 13 millimeter socket. These two bolts are holding up the factory fuel filter bracket we're going to save and reuse on the aluminum fuel door. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the rest of the fuel filter brackets and mounting brackets that hold the fuel filter in. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the nuts holding in the fuel filter. Save these nuts because we will need to reuse them later. Now that we have the fuel filter loose, we'll push it up and out of the way and let it rest on the back bracket while we get this bolt inside the, bolt, the fuel filter bracket. We will want to save this bolt that we took out of the inside the frame because we will reuse it with one of our brackets. The next step is to remove the factory fuel tank skid. Now that we have the factory OEM fuel tank skid loose and the tanks dropped a bit, we're gonna fish in a strap to strap up the plastic tank. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we have the tank strapped up and the OEM skid loose, we're gonna loosen the bolt on the rear OEM skid for the def tank and drop that down a little bit so we can push this up right here and pull out the factory OEM gas tank skid. When doing this, we do not wanna completely remove the bolts. We just wanna loosen them up so there's a little bit of play in this tank. Now that we have the OEM skid off, we're gonna grab the fuel tank strap that we send with our kit and bolt that into place to hold up the fuel tank. This is a fuel tank strap that we'll be using that came in your kit. One of the first things you wanna do is check and make sure you have all the correct hardware for this install. That way you can complete it without any issues. If you are missing any hardware, please call our sales department and they will get it to you or contact them at sales at rtechindustries.com. Now we're gonna start installing the supporting brackets. The dash four and dash five, we'll use this long M10 bolt with the washer and the two M10 nuts. So we need to remove the factory bolt from the front of the engine mount and replace it with the long M10 bolt that we include in the hardware kit. To do so, I'd recommend heating up a little bit of the bolt to loosen up the Loctite. You pull the bolt out, and once you do that, you're ready to install the mount. We do recommend putting some Loctite up towards the top of the bolt so it Loctites into the engine mount nut. We're going to put the dash four mount on the passenger side. Again, while installing all these supporting brackets from here on out, we wanna leave them all loose until everything is fully installed. The dash five bracket goes on the driver's side. For this nut, once we get the oil pan skid fully installed, we will come back, take that nut off, and put Loctite on it and reinstall it. The next step is installing parts dash eight and nine into the factory cross member. Make sure that the end hole, you can see the threads of the PEM nut. Dash nine goes on the other side. The next step is to install the oil pan skid using two of the 3 8 countersunk bolts and one of our custom 12 millimeter bolts. Again, I cannot emphasize it enough. We want to leave all the bolts loose until we have everything installed and we can go back and retighten everything up. If you do not leave them loose, you are gonna have a heck of a time trying to get everything to line up and installed correctly. Now that we've got these three bolts installed back here, we're gonna grab four button heads and attach the front oil pan skid to the mounting brackets to the engine mount. Since we're already up here, it would be a good time to install the oil pan supporting bracket, dash 25, into the oil pan. Using four button heads included in the hardware kit, again, we can leave that loose until we come back and tighten everything up. The next step is to install the cross member that we send with the kit. To do so, you'll want to grab one of our countersunk 1.5 millimeter bolts that we send with the kit and one of the custom countersink washers. This one you want to leave a little snug so it holds it into place. We're going to leave the passenger side off because we will put that bolt into place when we lift the transmission and TK skid plate into place. This is a transmission and TK skid plate. We'll install that, grab some 3 8 countersink bolts and two of our 12 millimeter bolts that we include in the hardware kit.
We're gonna take bracket dash three with the long countersink bolt and countersink washer and install it in the front piece of the transmission and TK skid right here. We will insert bracket dash three through the frame and put this up to the frame and bolt them together. Now that we got the transmission and TK skid plate on, we can install the exhaust skid plate. Let's get this bad boy on. Now that we got the skid on, we will install the supporting bracket, which is a dash 23. We'll use two of the button heads that we sent in the hardware kit and reuse the factory bolt that came out of the factory OEM skid. Again, we're gonna leave everything loose until everything is fully installed. Now we're going to finish the install on the fuel filter. Take the bracket dash seven and we will install this on the fuel filter and re-bolt it to the frame and back cross member. Easiest way to do this is to slide the bracket up onto the two bolts of the fuel filter. We're gonna leave these nuts off until we get the bracket fully installed. Now we're gonna pull the fuel filter back a little bit to get access to the factory bolt and bolt this back to the side of the frame. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna tighten the bolt into the frame. Using a 916 wrench, we're gonna tighten up the 3 8 graded bolt that we include with the kit to the back cross member. Now that we got the fuel filter bracket installed, we can install the two nuts on the studs on the fuel filter and fully tighten that up. We can install the nut strip that goes into the def tank that allows the bottom of the fuel tank skid to bolt up to the def tank. It's bracket dash 24 and looks like this. We will slide it in right here. When inserting the nut strip, you want to make sure the PEM nuts line up with the cutaways for the bolt to go through. Now that we have everything set on the vehicle to install the fuel tank skid, we can now grab the fuel tank skid and install it. If you do not have a transmission jack like I do, I recommend grabbing a friend to help you install this because it is definitely big. Let's get this on. Let's get to it. For attaching the fuel tank skid to the def tank, you want to grab two of the long 3 8 countersink bolts and insert them into the nut strip that you inserted into the def tank skid. These two countersinks, you can kind of cinch down to suck up the fuel tank skid just until you get the supporting bracket and the rest of the bolts into the fuel tank skid. To bolt up the gas tank skid right in front of the lower control arm mount, we're gonna use two of the spacers, the fat spacers that came in the hardware kit, one of the 1.5 millimeter countersink bolts, and one of the conical washers. Slide it in like that. Put in the two spacers. If you are having issues getting this bolt in, you can use a jack on the gas tank skid. And you can fully tighten this one up. Now the last part to bolting up the fuel tank skid is putting on the supporting bracket, dash 21. It goes right up here and we bolt it in using one of the factory bolts that you took out and two of the button heads that came in your hardware kit. What's cool about the bracket is we've added two holes in to put in the tabs that hold the line. Now we can install this fuel filter skid access door. To do so, you'll grab the bracket dash 17, the skid plate, and the supporting hardware, which is four countersink 
3 8 bolt and two of the factory bolts that you took out of the factory bracket for the fuel filter. First, we will put in dash 17. Line it up with the two holes on the transmission TK skid. And before we put the skid plate on, we need to remove this countersink bolt and the countersink washer. Now that we have all the skid plates bolted up, we have a few last steps to complete the install. We want to go through and tighten everything up, starting from the back to the front. And the last step is to drill one hole on the transmission TK skid right up here. We're going to drill through the frame and use the included nut strip to drop down into the frame and bolt it up. And this is the last step. Let's get going and finish this install. When we installed the motor mount brackets, I talked about putting Loctite on the nut. Now is the time to go back and put Loctite on the nut that holds the supporting bracket for the oil pan to the engine mount. I'm just gonna add some Loctite on the nut. Now that everything is fully tightened, we can drill out this hole. To do so, we'll use a center punch, hammer, drill and 3 8 drill bit and drill this through the frame and do the final bolt up so we can complete the installation. Let's get started. I'll show you how to drill it. Now the final bolt we'll put in is the last long 3 8 countersink bolt you have and the flat countersink washer and bracket dash 12. We'll insert dash 12 through the frame side and line it up with the hole down below. If you're running the TerraFlex long arm kit and you do not want to weld your brackets on, you can now reinstall their cross member that they send with their kit. It goes right back up and in and bolts right back in. Since we have welded the brackets onto the frame on this Jeep, we will leave this cross member off. Now that we've finished the install on the world's best belly pan for your diesel Gladiator, it is time to go out and use it and abuse it like we designed it to be used. This is it. If you like these videos, make sure you like and subscribe down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as well. I'll see you on the next one.